everybody for this digital lab we are um, going to do something a little bit exciting here we're going to try to figure out a little bit of a puzzle and we are going to then write up a pretty detailed uh, conclusion based on the information given so I wanted to set this up in a video so that you had everything in front of you and you can always refer back to this video. You can pause and rewind and re-listen to this video as you're going through each of the parts of the, of the lab. So here's, here's the idea. Um, you've done the lab and you can see the procedure right here in front of you. This is the procedure exactly found in, on uh, Professor Sherlock's website. It's the one that you would have followed in the class. And what we have below it is characterization. Okay. You have a refractive index here. Okay. And then you have a mass and we did the calculation. You got 53% yield. Um, you've also included the um, infrared spectra of cyclohexanol and you did, you did a spectra because you're good responsible students for cyclohexene. And lastly, we performed a GC. So that's the three big things, uh, refractive index, uh, IR and GC. So you get all this data when all of a sudden something crazy happened, you ran into somebody and you dropped your lab book. So you still have all the data here that that you wrote down in your lab book, but unfortunately the three GC or the three spectra got all mixed up and you need to figure out which one's which. Okay. So that's the little bit of the, the puzzle. So you're going to sort out the spectra. You're going to identify whether you're, we're looking at an IR or a GC. And then for the two IRs, you're going to identify which one is the cyclohexene, the reactant, or you're going to figure, and you're going to figure out which one is the cyclohexanol the product of the reaction. And then for each of those IR, I want you to identify the characteristic peaks. And then the last one, you are going to um, figure out which one's the GC. And based on that, you should identify also the peaks, excuse me, the peaks that are in, in that. You're going to write a thorough conclusion for this lab. In that conclusion, you want to... Um, you want to support your purpose. The purpose of most synthetic labs is to make the pure product. And so in this case, of course, you made pure product. You know how I know that? Because you're awesome. And so for the pure cyclohexanol, uh, you're just basically going to support your conclusion that you made cyclohexanol. And you're going to try to determine how you know that it that you made cyclohexanol and how you know that it's pure. So there's two ways you can determine how you know that you made cyclohexanol. And the first way is by using um, the IR and identifying peaks and using that as supporting evidence. And the other way is using refractive index data, uh, which you have up above and in, in supporting, um, in, in supporting uh, your structure using that. Uh, the second thing is I want you to make comments on the purity of your product. Is it completely pure? Is it kind of pure? Is it not pure at all? And in order to do that, you can use, again, refractive index data, and you can use the GC um, that you've identified in part uh, one. The last thing I want you to do in your conclusion is to comment on the percent yield. Um, is 53% a good yield or a poor yield? Is it in the middle? How do you know? How do you know if it's good? Okay. And you can refer back again to GC and index of refraction data to determine if 53 is really representative of the yield you got, if your stuff was pure, um, but you're looking at comments there. And the third thing that's special for this online uh, version of the lab is I want you to go back and read the lab and identify three places where there could have been an error made and the outcome of the lab was affected because of that error. I give you an example there um, about how the mixture may not have been distilled long enough because it wasn't distilled long enough. There was some product left behind in the pot. Um, and then because it was left behind, the, the percent yield would have been lower. So the idea here is you're connecting um, a procedural thing to how it would have affected the outcome of your lab to the written part of your lab 
And I think that that's important when you're not in the lab is to try to make those connections between what the procedure calls for and how it may impact the outcome of your lab. So that's, um, so that's what it is. So you'll have, uh, you'll have to identify, uh, the GC, uh, the, the GCs and the IR. Um, the spectras are here. They're on separate pages. And then, um, you will, uh, fill out uh, this and then write a conclusion and then do some error analysis. Um, I'm sure there's going to be more to follow after this, but that gives you at least an introduction of what you're going to be doing for the synthesis of cyclohexanol. Okay, everybody have a great day.